A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Manika, researcher and event coordinator with Flora Fauna Science Foundation. And on behalf of the foundation, I welcome you all to the third lead lecture of Flora Fauna Talks on the season theme, Krishi Se Khushi. Joining us today, we have Dr. Satyanshu Kumar, Director and Principal Scientist at ICR Directorate of Medicinal and Aromatic Plants Research as our lead speaker. It is an honor and privilege to have you here, sir. Welcome to the forum. We also have Professor S.P.S. Kanoja, Founder Chairman of Flora Fauna Science Foundation, uh, Dr. A.K. Singh, Senior Vice President of the Body, and Dr. Neeraj Jain, General Secretary of the Foundation. Greetings and welcome you all. Uh, may I now request Professor S.P.S. Kanoja to please initiate the session and as well as welcome our guests. नमस्कार आप सभी का इस मंच पर स्वागत अभिनंदन आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू ऑन दिस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ फ्लोरा फोना साइंस फाउंडेशन वी हैव टुडे विद अस डॉक्टर सत्यांशु कुमार डायरेक्टर ऑफ डी मैप आर डायरेक्टोरेट ऑफ मेडिसिनल एंड एरोमेटिक प्लांट रिसर्च व्हिच इज एन आईसीआर इंस्टीट्यूशन एज द मेन स्पीकर Uh, welcome uh, satyanshu uh, to this uh, platform and thank you for accepting our request to deliver this uh, theme talk uh, friends uh, those of you who are uh, watching this uh, platform on facebook live and also later on youtube i also welcome you all to uh, this very important uh, topic uh, i would like to uh, just uh, initiate the dialogue which then would be elaborated further by uh, dr uh, satyanshu uh, kumar uh, i begin with uh, the platform the platform is flora fauna science foundation which uh, many of you who have been watching us know is uh, a dream uh, platform it's a it's a science foundation which acts as a bridge between scientific organizations research organization technology uh, developers and the society to benefit them to translate the science discoveries into a format which is directly useful by the society and our main focus is always villages that's why our mission statement says that we are aiming to make e villages that is entrepreneurial villages through technology and science and in that we also aim to uh, empower hena hena is health nutrition and agriculture now this three aspects we are always keeping on top of our mind when we are uh, moving forward as most of you would be knowing that our uh, our foundation on this web series or knowledge platform works on themes and the first theme we had was uh, two years back that is khet se sehat and then came last year which was poshan se roshan and this year it is krishi se khushi uh, we want to create happiness through farming and happiness as you know comes first part of the happiness is a healthy society when you are healthy you can be happy and second is you should also be economically uh, happy that means incomes employment entrepreneurship all these have uh, to come out for society to make it uh, happy and how can agriculture do it how can agriculture really uh, deliver the happiness is the theme of uh, this year we had two earlier talks one by uh, director of iari dr ashok kumar singh and then padam shri dr uh, bram singh today is the third talk of this theme which uh, dr satyanshi kumar is uh, going to uh, give now this talk becomes very very important from both the angles the health as well as economics health in the sense that plants or the herbs what we call they uh, give you uh, give you the tools as well as uh, the path uh, to discover the ways to keep yourself healthy both preventive as well as curative health care is possible through plants we usually talk of uh, our traditional system of medicine in which we say ayurveda yunani siddha homeopathy and so on all these are dependent on plants 
and what do the plants do there plants give us some chemicals what we call as phytochemicals or phytoconstituents of the plants which are a consequence of their primary and secondary metabolism most of the medicinal molecules are the consequence of secondary metabolism and that's what gives us another way to look at agriculture when we talk of chemicals produced by agriculture that means there is not only a biology side of agriculture but also a chemical side of agriculture and also removes a myth that we have to be allergic to chemicals well nature produces chemicals we cannot be allergic to chemicals we have to look at uh, obnoxious chemicals toxic chemicals those which are contaminant chemicals we have to be careful but what plants produce or biological systems produce could be very very useful to us because always a biological system produces eco compatible uh, molecules only so the molecules phytoconstituents and uh, the drug molecules can come out of uh, a plants that means what i many times refer as farming to farming where first spelling says f a r m i n g and second spelling says p h a r m i n g we can make pharmaceuticals from the plants and that is called phytoceuticals or phytopharmaceuticals and also aromas or aromaceuticals which can be again useful for health as well as our lifestyle so it's an enormous wealth which plants produce as the biochemicals or chemicals or phytoconstituents which can be of great use to us and that different perspective of agriculture if we are looking at it's going to do wonders for us so therefore let us look holistically at agriculture how it will give us happiness and how the chemicals or the phytochemicals that plants or the herbs produce can really lead to health but not only that when we start looking at a comparison between a plant like wheat or rice where grains are the yield and look at a plant like artemisia or uh, ashwagandha where phytoconstituents are uh, the harvest then the amount of benefit these phytoconstituents can give is multiple times in terms of income compared to wheat and rice and therefore the time has come we go for the i3 model of uh, flora fauna science foundation which says the agriculture has to be i cube and in i cube three i's are the innovative integrative and inclusive agriculture and that means we are not saying replace wheat and rice with medicinal plants or aromatic plants or any uh, chemical producing plants we are saying integrate them along with the food crops you get food you get uh, the health tools and also it leads to a better soil health and therefore an ecosystem so economics and ecology both have to be looked after and most of these medicinal and aromatic plants are actually very good remediators also of environment and uh, particularly the medicinal plants which uh, dr satyan shukumar is going to talk about so uh, i would say that the topic that we have today is very very important from holistic understanding of agriculture as income generation platform as well as health generating a platform with changing the lifestyles of society that everyone becomes happy so i will uh, uh, i will like to stop here so that you can listen to the real in depth thing uh, from dr satyanshu kumar but before that a small sentence the uh, listeners can also understand and it is uh, jo hamare paude hain jo jinko hum oshadhi aur sagand paude bolte hain वो कुछ ऐसे रासायनिक तत्व बनाते हैं अपने मेटाबॉलिज्म द्वारा जो कि बहुत ही लाभकारी हो सकते हैं एक तरफ तो स्वास्थ्य के लिए दूसरी तरफ पोषण के लिए और तीसरी तरफ हमारी जो आमदनी है आय है उसको बढ़ाने के लिए और जो ये पौधे हैं जिसका ये डायरेक्टोरेट है डायरेक्टोरेट ऑफ मेडिसिन एरोमेटिक प्लांट रिसर्च जो आई का संस्थान है उसके निदेशक हैं डॉक्टर सत्यांशु कुमार जो कि आज हमें बताएंगे कि इन पौधों द्वारा कैसे हम खुशहाली ला सकते हैं और वो खुशहाली हमारा जो थीम है इस वर्ष का कृषि से खुशी उसको हम कैसे प्राप्त करेंगे कैसे हमारा समाज जो है वो स्वस्थ भी बनेगा और वो आर्थिकी स्तर पर भी लाभ प्राप्त करेगा और एक एक ऐसी मुस्कान लाएगा चेहरों पे कि लोग कहेंगे कि हाँ 
हम कृषि करते हैं और हम खुश हैं आ, मैं ज्यादा समय ना लेते हुए डॉक्टर सत्यांशु कुमार के लिए आ, समय देना चाहूंगा लेकिन उससे पहले मैं डॉक्टर नीरज जैन को रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि वो उनका एक परिचय दें आई विल रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर नीरज जैन टू गिव ए फॉर्मल इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ अवर थीम टॉक स्पीकर डॉक्टर सत्यांशु कुमार डॉक्टर नीरज जैन थैंक यू वेरी मच सर Uh, as sir said, not taking much time, I'll just uh, go straight away to the introduction. Dr. Shatyanshu Kumar obtained master's degree in organic chemistry from University of Guwahati, presently IIT Roorkee. He completed M.Tech degree in modern methods of chemical analysis and control from Chemistry Department of IIT Delhi. Dr. Kumar completed his PhD degree from CSIR CMAT Lucknow and was a postdoctoral fellow at Ogden College of Science and Engineering, Western Kentucky University, in USA. He joined Indian Council of Agriculture Research, New Delhi, as scientist in 1997, and presently serving as principal scientist at ICR Directorate of Medicinal and Aromatic Plants Research at Anand. Dr. Kumar also served Defense Research and Development Organization as scientist. His main area of research work is phytochemical processing of medicinal plants for enrichment and specialized metabolites. He has developed extraction optimization process. an hpnc and mass spectrometric uh, spectrometric based standard operating protocol for characterization of bioactive compounds for more than 25 medicinal aromatic plants like ageratum conizoides andrographis paniculata desmodium species acrita alba gymnema silvestri uh, glyceriza glabra phalanthus species plumbago gelanica and many more Uh, he has also worked extensively in the area of supercritical fluid extraction of medicinal plants. Dr. Kumar has guided five students of PhD degree and also provided professional attachment training to five scientists of Agriculture Research Services in the Council of Agriculture Research at New Delhi. He has successfully carried out research projects on medicinal plants funded by NMPB, Department of Biotechnology, National Agriculture Science Foundation. and icr new delhi he has published more than 85 research papers in peer reviewed national and international journals he has also authored two books and more than 12 book chapters dr kumar has submitted four patent application and also registered one jump plant of gymnasma gymnema silvestri source of herbal based anti diabetic formulations recently herbal formulation for management for acaricide resistant ticks in animals developed by him was validated in field trials he has also Worked extensively with Garcinia in that he has developed the Taxol mimics. He has developed isolation methods for lead molecules, which have been tested for anti-cancer properties in vivo and in vitro. Microencapsulated product development by him have also exhibited covicidal and larvicidal properties against clinical isolates of human hookworm and Cyclostoma duodenale. In the area of value addition of post harvest management in medicinal and aromatic crops, he has also organized two winter schools sponsored by ICR and one model training course sponsored by Directorate of Extension, Department of Agriculture. Dr. Kumar is also recipient of CSIR, UGCGRF, GATE fellowship, and DST Serve International Travel Support Grant. With this brief introduction, I hand over the platform to you, sir. most respected uh, uh, professor uh, dr khaluja sir uh, dr uh, anil kumar singh sir or dr neeraj jain madam or dr manika madam and the other participants who are attending this uh, uh, webinar and uh, first of all i would like to express my sincere thank to dr khaluja sir uh, i don't know how he believed in my capacity because uh, still i am not confident that uh, i am at that level for delivering this uh, elite topic but uh, also i would like to say that whatever i would be uh, putting before you only because of uh, dr khanuja sir because he had uh, permitted uh, me at uh, cmap for phd degree when i was serving as a icr in service candidate and during my whole stay at uh, cmap lucknow i never felt that uh, i am out of uh, cmap system and whatever uh, still i have gained even a single word knowledge i have gained only because of the khanuja sir because i was permitted to work there and during my stay of uh, 
CMAP. I could understand the medicinal plant. Otherwise, I was uh, working uh, as a synthetic organic chemist, and uh, uh, because of that, everything uh, in medicinal plant I uh, only because of the Khanuja sir and uh, CMAP. And uh, as uh, uh, sir was mentioning that today's topic, krisi se kusi, is a very important uh, topic. And uh, fortunately. If uh, uh, this idea gets uh, momentum, then once uh, uh, earlier also Dr. Kamja sir uh, has told uh, uh, that Krisi se Kusi is a topic which may change uh, the shape of the our society, not only in terms of the human health care, also in the uh, many facets of the society, because uh, health is the primary uh, concern and uh, uh, in addition to health, the income, source of the income is uh, also a very important aspect of this society. And Krisi Se Kusi is a arena which can make uh, this accomplishment uh, successful. And uh, as far as uh, today's uh, topic is concerned, already Sir has described very precisely and very uh, meticulously that uh, what is the importance of the phytochemicals. Sir has already mentioned that plants make two types of phytochemicals, uh, that is uh, primary metabolites and uh, secondary metabolites as a result of the metabolism in the plants. Generally, importance of the primary metabolites are known to all of us, but uh, most of the time we ignore the importance and the relevance of the secondary metabolites, which are uh, generally considered as a waste. So during my presentation, I would uh, like to highlight on the importance of the secondary metabolites, which are the source of the many leading drug and uh, also for the many uh, useful phytochemicals, not only for the management of the human health, also for the many other important aspects. So in my presentation, I, I would be uh, so, um, I will try my best to highlight this significant aspect and what opportunities these phytochemicals present before us. Because uh, as Sir was uh, telling that if uh, we could harness the potential of these uh, secondary metabolites uh, from the plant, there is a possibility that there could be a change which can be easily visible uh, in the society. So with uh, this, I would like to continue with uh, my slides. It's visible, sir. You can go oh, ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, briefly, phytochemicals belong to, belong to the group of uh, plant-derived compounds. Phytochemicals. Uh, means the chemicals which are derived from the plants. Uh, accordingly, these chemicals are named as a phytochemicals. Plant cells, as I mentioned, that carry both type of uh, secondary and primary metabolism. And primary metabolism, metabolism is mostly carried out by plants for the synthesis of the amino acids, sugar, fatty acids, and other biological molecules, which are essentially required for the survival of the plants itself. Secondary metabolite is activated only during a particular stage of the growth or when the plant is under stress. Stress could be biological, biotic stress or abiotic stress. And during secondary metabolism, um, plants, a single plant may produce, uh, single plant is able to produce more than 100 and even more than 200 or 300 of phytochemicals. And these phytochemicals are known as the secondary metabolites because these are not for important for their survival, these are their food, but these secondary metabolites are important for the, their survival to meet the stress created by the biotic as well as the abiotic stress. And, uh, uh, stress. and this uh, secondary metabolites is generally derived from the primary meta metabolites through the modifications such as methylation, hydro hydroxylation, and many other chemical processes. These phytochemicals are also uh, give uh, color, aroma, flavor, and protection 
uh, to the plant from the infection and the predator, predators. And at this stage, about uh, two or less phytochemicals have been reported from the plant. But uh, uh, if our diet, that is the fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and nuts are also a very rich source of the phytochemicals. And our food is a source of about 5,000 individual dietary of phytochemicals. Some phytochemicals produce activity in the biological system in humans. And accordingly, these phytochemicals are known as the bioactive phytochemicals. Phytochemicals, as well as the medicinal plants, remain the most abundant source of the health care and life improvement since a very long period. And to improve or to produce the phytochemicals from the plant, several advanced technology have been used, such as genetic engineering, molecular techniques, and like so many uh, omics and uh, uh, engineering technology have been used for the production of the higher phytochemicals from the plant. And it has been estimated that uh, about 24 to 27% of the uh, presently available drugs are directly or indirectly derived from the plant sources. And several synthetic drugs, drugs have also been developed as the analogs, prototypes of the natural phytochemicals, which serve as the lead compounds for these synthetic drugs. Generally, phytochemicals have been characterized in the of uh, five uh, major groups, that is carbohydrates, lipids, terpenoids, phenolic acids, alkaloids, and other nitrogen-containing metabolites. And these individual groups have a long list of the phytochemicals belonging to uh, these uh, major groups. As far as the global demand for the phytochemicals is uh, concerned, it, uh, its growth rate was about 7% during 2016 to 2020, and it is estimated to have a business of more than 14 billion US dollar by the end of this decade, with a compound annual growth rate of about 10%. Phytochemicals, uh, as Sir has made mentioned, that uh, medicinal plant is a very important source source of the uh, secondary metabolites, uh, phytochemicals. And phytochemicals isolated from medicinal plant have been a source of many currently commercial drugs and currently being uh, continuously being uh, sub, uh, studied for this purpose of the drug discovery. And uh, the major class uh, uh, of the secondary metabolites here also have been described in this uh, table. As far as the distribution of the medicinal plant is concerned, its distribution is not uniform across the globe. And in India, about 8,000 medicinal plants have been confirmed by the taxonomic survey of the botanical survey of the India. And it is very pleasant for us to know that in India, about more than 40% plants which are available in different agroclimatic zones of the India have some or other medicinal pro properties. Phytochemicals uh, and drugs, as, as far as the role of the phytochemicals in the drug discovery is concerned, selection of the chemical markers is crucial. Generally, uh, whenever we consider, we, we think of the medicinal plant or phytochemicals for their characterization, generally two types of markers is selected. First is chemical, um, markers and second one is the bioactive markers. Chemical markers is important for the quality control, including the authentication of the genuine species or genuine planting material. And it is also important for harvesting the best quality of the material, evaluation of the post harvest handling, assessment of the intermediates and finished products, and also very important for the detection of the harmful or toxic ingredient, if any, it is present in the plant. Phytochemicals and drug discovery, for that we have to select the bioactive markers, which must be characteristic or have, must have some synergistic or correlative or toxic 
compounds that will be the best uh, ideal chemical marker uh, selected for as the bioactive marker for the characterization of the phytochemicals or the plant and as far as the uh, abundance of the phytochemicals are concerned these phytochemicals are restricted to individual species some phytochemicals are uh, below, uh, restricted to a particular group of the plants and uh, some uh, specific phytochemicals are found only in the certain specific plant organs these uh, characteristics give a distinct advantages of this some uh, phytochemicals distributed among the different plants as well as among the different species and it is also worthy to mention here that there are several phytochemicals which are not restricted to a single a group of plant or single species of the plant there are several phytochemicals which are ubiquitous in nature and may be present in uh, many more species in that case if we have we, we have to be very cautious uh, cautious uh, whenever such type of the phytochemical is selected for the characterization of the a plant or extract because uh, most of the time uh, whatever we select that is not very unique in nature that is also present in many plant species so selection of the phytochemical for the characterization is uh, very important and our efforts should be that it should be either unique to that uh, species of the plant or uh, to that uh, plant uh, uh, only and uh, usage of the phytochemicals there is a huge uh, arena for the usage of the phytochemicals just uh, i am mentioning that nowadays phytochemicals is uh, finding a huge uh, importance in many foods beverages or functional food as a nutraceuticals or health supplements in addition to that uh, food products uh, the phytochemicals are also getting a huge demand in the cosmetic uh, uh, cosmetic industry for protection of the uv rays and uh, various type of the elements uh, as a uh, protective uh, phytochemicals and uh, also most important part already we are mentioning that for the medicinal purposes that is for drug discovery and nowadays uh, when we are considering that uh, Uh, that we should restrict to the use of the uh, synthetic uh, chemicals then role of the phytochemicals in for the management uh, as a biological control agent is also getting a huge impetus forms of the phytochemicals definitely at this stage we must know that what could be the uh, what, what is the form of the phytochemicals generally for phytochemicals is present as a enriched fract in enriched extract or fraction and uh, purified compounds or encapsulated extract or fraction here the uh, purified compounds have the highest market value because uh, most uh, mostly it is a single compound like synthetic compounds and have minimum amount of the impurities enriched uh, extract or fraction means the extract which have been a very high content of the particularly selected phytochemicals and for that we have to do the a lot of work so that we can remove the undesired portion and we should maximize the concentration of the enriched content of the phytochemical in the enriched fraction now sometimes the stability of the phytochemicals also become a, a an issue for that purpose uh, encapsulation is one of the uh, way that uh, by using the encapsulation uh, we can not only increase the shelf life of the uh, phytochemicals but also the biological property of the phytochemicals because encapsulation helps in many more ways as far as the farming of the medicinal plant uh, as a source of the phytochemicals is concerned medicinal plant generally we consider as a short duration or seasonal crops that means uh, it is a short duration 3 to 6 month duration it may be annual uh, duration 
or perennial and also the tree species generally the cultivation of the medicinal plant as a source of the phytochemicals could be considered for the uh, depending upon the time or uh, this uh, all the time duration i have uh, described in this uh, slide and uh, now the question is that the, what are the process for the getting the phytochemicals from the medicinal plant first source the uh, first step for getting the phytochemicals from the uh, medicinal plant is the primary post harvest management primary post harvest management is nothing but it is grading cleaning drying packaging storage uh, and including the powder mill and the secondary post harvest uh, management have a much a scope for providing the uh, opportunity for entrepreneurship or giving the source as a uh, source of uh, income that means by using the secondary post harvest uh, management we can produce the extract by using the suitable extraction method because now it is a large number of the extraction method both conventional and non conventional extraction methods have been uh, available and each and every method has some uh, of its merit and some of its limitation so depending of the our requirement we can select a, a suitable extraction method for making the uh, extract uh, which is enriched or a source of the uh, desired phytochemical thereafter once the extract extraction is done the removal of this uh, extraction solvent is one of the important process followed by the enrichment of the fraction enrichment of the fraction uh, could be carried out by using any of the chromatographic and other related techniques and thereafter we have an opportunity to isolate phytochemicals because individual purified phytochemicals have a uh, very high price in the market and that all of us know that uh, what uh, cost of the uh, even most ubiquitous phytochemicals in the uh, sigma and rich or merck catalog is how much that we know thereafter uh, once all these uh, all these steps has been carried out then characterization and final purification is also must desired because whatever we are making that we must be sure that what is the content and uh, uh, sir has uh, uh, taught me that you must have a fingerprint that means either you are using a extract or using any uh, plant material then you must have a fingerprint of uh, that material that means what are the present so that whenever uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a, an opportunity that we can produce that this is the fingerprint of this extract of or this phytochemical or this uh, plant material so if this characterization and purification is very important uh, for getting the uh, good quality fingerprint then thereafter or uh, then thereafter there is an opportunity to make the diversification of the product that from the extract you can make a number of the products either in a micro encapsulated product or the way the you required depending upon the your requirement and this table briefly gives that how much the value addition is being carried out <coughs> at the different stages of the you know, primary and secondary processing Of, of the of plant material to get the phytochemicals now before uh, uh, that uh, before that i would like to inform you that uh, we have been working at this directorate on several uh, medicinal and aromatic plant but uh, i will be presenting some of the uh, my work which i have work uh, carried out at uh, this uh, directorate uh for the characterization of the medicinal aromatic plant or development of the complete uh, processes and for that we have also uh, selected the different uh, marker compounds uh, it is uh, both chemical as well as biological marker in some of the cases that i will be uh, describing uh andrographis paniculata commonly known as the calme about uh, more than 20 species of the andrographis is uh, have been reported from the india 
but the most uh, uh, studied uh, species from the andrographis uh, group is the andrographis paniculata and the its economic part is leaves herbage herbage sometimes we call panchan that all five parts of uh, kalmek is important in terms of uh, its uh, usage as a source of different group of phytochemicals or different uh, uh, for the different uh, biological purposes or for the different herb purposes and uh, andrographis paniculata has a group of phytochemicals which are known as the andrographis and three andrographis that's this one andrographis neo andrographis and uh, andrographinin are the major andrographis present in the andrographis paniculata although more than 20 andrographis andrographis uh, from the andrographis paniculata have been reported but uh, we have characterized this species on the basis of these uh, uh, three uh, uh, selected andrographis and uh, uh, still there an opportunity that uh, we can uh, do the characterization of the other species or even andrographis paniculata for the whole spectrum of the andrographis present in the andrographis paniculata next we have worked on the asparagus resomensis asparagus resomensis or is a plant which have um, many properties and most importantly it is used as a source of uh, a health supplement for the uh, female health and the its economy its economic economic part is saponins although the in addition to asparagus resomensis other some uh, other species that the asparagus ascendants have been also being uh, studied uh, in our country and both these uh, asparagus species are rich source of the saponins having a huge number of biological activity and we have selected satavrin as satavrin 4 as a marker compound for the characterization of the extract or uh, prepared from the root of the uh, asparagus resomensis and we have used hplc uh, elsd method for the generation of this hplc elsd fingerprint of the asparagus uh, resomensis extract cassia species uh, is well known for its laxative property and it is uh, it has been reported by different uh, uh, corners of the world that is the nature has produced the best uh, form of the laxative in the cassia angustifolia that is sena and sena leaf is a source of the many laxative drugs and we have characterized the uh, uh, extract prepared from the sena uh, leaves as well as pod because pod has a uh, uh, higher content of uh, senoside a and senoside b in comparison to the leaves and senoside a and b are the major senoside present in the cassia angustifolia uh, leaves although researchers from the other country have reported a series of senoside from senoside a to senoside j but uh, we are not uh, we were not able to get those senoside so we restricted our characterization work for the uh, sena uh, species only to senoside a and senoside uh, b at this stage uh, i would like to mention that we have worked on 20 sena species uh, for the correct because we were searching that what are the other sena sena species from the india which uh, have a significant amount of the senoside comparable to the uh, cassia angustifolia uh, so in addition to uh, cassia angustifolia we were able to get uh, information that uh, in addition to cassia angustifolia and cassia fistula a uh, few more species have a significant amount of the senoside in the leaves and other important species from the cassia uh, cassia family is cassia toda actually this uh, cassia toda have been also a uh, good demand in the international market and india is one of the country which exports the seed of the uh, cassia toda to different parts of the world and cassia toda seed also has a senoside a and b 
but in addition to that kesia tora have been a good uh, amount of the anthraquinones uh, present in uh, in uh, in its extract and based on the lcms uh, ms data we were uh, able to identify these uh, anthraquinone derivatives aloimodine rain imodine chrysophenol and physocon it is important to mention that these uh, anthraquinones have been reported to have a very good biological activity particularly for antiviral and antimicrobial uh, activity uh, uh, these anthraquinones are very much a, uh, a good activity and these uh, anthraquinones are also present in one of the very important drug of the traditional chinese medicine that is ruam species ruam species is available in india but only at uh, very uh, high altitude particular uh, and it is available in either in the uh, high altitude of arunachal pradesh or kashmir and based on the chemical uh, profiling or uh, information from the literature we could establish that same these five anthraquinones are present in the uh, extract of the ruam species so the uh, anthraquinone profile of the cassia tora species are uh, acacia tora is very much similar to the ruam species then desmodium gangeticum uh, root is one of the uh, important ingredient of a very established uh, ayurvedic drug dasmolaris and uh, chavanpras and its root has a, a phytochemical known as the gangetin unfortunately what if this gangetin was reported about 50 years back from the uh, desmodium root thereafter the work has stopped uh, completely nobody uh, worked for the characterization of the gangetin because this is the only molecule uh, which is characteristic to desmodium species otherwise people have uh, used the characterization of the uh, desmodium species based on the some uh, phenolic uh, acids which are ubiquitous in nature so those phenolic acid could not be considered as a marker of this uh, uh, desmodium species so after the literature survey we could establish that the desmodium species from the india are uh, have a, a presence of the gangetin and we worked on 10 desmodium uh, uh, desmodium species and we could found that desmodium species are present in only few uh, few des desmodium species then eclipta alba is also a very well established uh, medicinal plant particularly for the use of uh, this uh, medicinal plant for uh, hepatoprotective uh, drug and uh, the bedolactone is a molecule which ascribes the many biological property of this uh, eclipta alba and we character we have uh, developed the complete process for the characterization of the bedolactone uh, in the eclipta alba Inoka stema axillary it is commonly known as the mamejo in the different uh, parts of the gujarat and a, in fact it is a coastal plant and you can think uh, you can say that it is a zero input crop mostly grows in the forests of the uh, gujarat and some other coastal uh, states and it is a good source of the and uh, a phytochemical which is sersia marine and its economic part is a whole plant is used for the uh, preparation of the different herbal drug and at this stage i would like to mention that uh, this is one of the plant which makes a secondary metabolite to contain in a very huge content we could establish from our works that sersia marine content in the a whole plant of the uh, inoka stema axillary may exceed up to 10% then generally uh, 12 to 15% uh, sersia marine uh, is present in the uh, inoka stema axillary and uh, this uh, in, this is also a very uh, important phytochemicals as far as its biological activity is concerned 
then garcinia species i needless to uh, mention that the garcinia species uh, across the world have been studied as a source of the taxol mimic compounds and taxol mimic compounds this uh, or uh, garcinia fruit rinds are the source of the those compounds and in india about 40 garcinia species are uh, reported from the western ghat as well as the different states of the north east india and we have worked on 12 garcinia species and uh, we could establish that uh, most of the garcinia species have two groups of compounds that is first one is the xanthons and second one is the uh, polyisoprenorated benzophenones and these two groups of phytochemicals are present in a uh, quite a good uh, percentage in the fruit rinds of the garcinia species and these uh, uh, molecules are reported uh, uh, reported to have the same uh, mode of action as the taxol have been reported that is induction of the apoptosis and inhibition of the micro tubule uh, tubule tubulin process uh, because of that these molecules are known as uh, taxol mimic compounds and we have established we have developed a complete process for the uh, extraction as well as the characterization as well as isolation and preparation of the enriched uh, extract because these molecules are known as high value molecules in the international market having a great scope for diversification of many uh, types gymnimnus sylvester is known as gurmar and its economic part is leaves and gymnimnus sylvester is one of the established medicinal plant uh, in different systems of indian medicines for anti diabetic property and we have uh, developed a process for characterization of the gymnima genin uh, that is uh, uh, a molecule belonging to saponin class uh, saponin class of compounds for the characterization of the gymnima extracts uh, for different biological purpose then another group another group of uh, plant we, which uh, we we have work is lipidium sativum actually this uh, uh, plant belongs to the brassics brassicaceae family and one good advantage is that it has a very good quantity of the uh, edible oil just like to mustard oil but in addition to that this uh, plant seed is also a good source of the phenolic acids as well as the glucosinolates because many of the glucosinolates have been reported um, uh, many biological in, uh, activity including the control management of the insect pest and many more uh, other health beneficial uh, property of the phenolic acid from the lipidium sativum have been reported in addition to that the leaf uh, sorry the seed of this uh, lipidium sativum has a very good galactogo property just like that of the uh, asparagus uh, rhizomesis then we have also worked on lipi uh, leptadenia reticulata Le leptadenia reticulata its stem and leaves are the important uh, economic part and it is uh, leptadenia reticulata is also one of the uh, component of the many well established uh, ayurvedic uh, drugs and this uh, 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 this uh, uh, stem has very important group of phytochemicals which have a very good biological in, uh, activity including uh, the uh, uh, benefits for improving the eyesight that is epigenin luteolin luteolin diosmetin and of course uh, uh, phytoesterol beta cytosol we have characterized in the extract of the uh, leptidenia reticulata uh, uh, stem using this lcms ms method then mukuna prurins mukuna prurins uh, have been used in different uh, indian system of medicines as a source uh, for the uh, management of the uh, problems related to alzheimers and parkinsons and mukuna prurins seed is a rich source of a compound known as l dopa and uh, we have uh, developed the process 
for characterization and even isolation of L dopa from the seed extract of the Mucuna prurens. Then Phylanthus MRS. Phylanthus MRS is also, we can say that it is, it is a zero input crop, but uh, because we, uh, in our uh, directorate, whenever there is a rain, we, uh, we find that uh, there is a good number of uh, plant of the Phylanthus MRS. And uh, Phylanthus MRS is important source of the uh, group of phytochemicals known as lignans that is phylanthin, hypophylanthin, niranthin, and nirtetralin. And these lignans are responsible as per the literature available for the liver protecting property of this uh, phylanthus uh, MRS uh, a, a plant. And in addition to that, to phylanthus species, we have worked on other uh, phylanthus species uh, from the uh, available uh, in the Gujarat, that in addition to that uh, lignans, uh, uh, these uh, phylanthus species are also a, have a great uh, chemical diversity. That means it is a good, uh, 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 good source of other biologically active molecules like gorilla gene, which have a very good biological activity, elagic acid, chebulagic acid, and chebulonic acid. These phenolics or tannins are also the marker compounds of the terminalia species, which have been reported uh, as a very good source of the, many of the traditional drugs. Then we have also worked on the plumbago gelenica because plumbago plumb gelenica root is a source of the many antibacterial products and it is used in the many of uh, soap related uh, products and even in soap industry. And its uh, root has a phytochemical known as plumbagin. We have characterized uh, a large number of accessions of plumbago gelenica for the content of the plumbagin. Then saraka soka. Saraka soka is, uh, is the source of the important Ayurvedic drug that the asoka rista and its bark is the main ingredient of that Asoka Rista and bark contains a group of the phytochemicals known as the catechins. Catechins are important because it is a, a very good health beneficial effect and those catechins which are present in the bark and leaves of the Saraka Asoka are also present in the green tea and apples as well as in the red wine. And uh, uh, at uh, our directorate, we could establish that the content of the catechin is much higher in the uh, leaf extract of the Saraka Asoka. And uh, this data so that the content of the catechins, uh, these catechins are much higher in the leaves uh, uh, in comparison to the bark of the uh, uh, Saraka Asoka, and uh, if we could validate that the leaf and the bark have this similar activity, then the destructive harvesting of the Saraka Asoka could be stopped if uh, the leaves could be uh, used uh, in place of the bark of the Saraka Asoka. Terminalia species already we have worked on four terminalia species, terminalia arjuna, terminalia bellerica, and terminalia chiabula. And uh, uh, I have already mentioned that the terminalia species are good source of the phenolics and tannin compounds like porilagin, uh, gallic acid, elagic acid, and uh, chiabulinic acids. Also, we have worked on the Vitex species, Vitex species, two Vitex species. The economic part is its leaf, and we have worked on Vitex nigundo and Vitex uh, trifolia. And Vitex nigundo and Vitex trifolia is used in many uh, hepatoprotective products, and the phytochemicals present in the leaves of the Vitex species are ignocide, nigundoside, and polyhydroxy benzoic acid. This polyhydroxy benzoic acid has a property to absorb many uh, skin damaging uh, sun rays. 
then we uh, we are extensively working on the uthania somnifera that is asugandha and uh, we have developed a different extraction process for the preparation of the uh, extract which is enriched in the withnolite although more than 30 withnolites have been reported from the uthania somnifera but the major withnolite present in the root and uh, the uh, leaves of the Vithania somnifera is with with uh, her A, with her 12 dioxy with no light and with no light D. We have uh, developed uh, both conventional and uh, uh, non conventional method for the preparation of the enriched extract, and uh, they are followed by their characterization by HPLC PDA uh, method. So these are the uh, crops we have worked as a source of. Uh, phytochemicals uh, at this directorate and uh, uh, we have developed the process. So uh, this table briefly shows that the, what are the health benefit of the three major uh, class of the phytochemicals, which belongs to polyphenols, terpenols, terpenes, and uh, alkaloids. And this is a just representative. There may be many more activity, but this, uh, this table gives a representative potential health benefit of the three major uh, group of phytochemicals from the different uh, medicinal plant. And uh, now what are the uh, uh, farming opportunities for getting the phytochemicals from the medicinal plant? Uh, already we have discussed that uh, the farming of the medicinal plant as a source of the phytochemicals may lead to income generation for as different stakeholders, whether it may be the farmers or other related stakeholders, and of course, most important, uh, most importantly, the farming for the phytochemicals would lead to uh, providing leads for improving the better quality of the life. Then there are some opportunity that uh, we can uh, tap those opportunity. That is chemotype based farming. Chemotype based farming means if you or uh, if, we, if you are intended, then you can select a particular group of uh, phytochemicals and concentrate on the getting the development of the agrotechnic for getting the high content of that particular uh, chemotype, just like withnolide uh, from the uh, asugandha or senocide from the uh, sena. Thereafter, enhancement of the phytochemical content without comparing with the yield. And of course, there, an, uh, there is an opportunity for, uh, for designer uh, farming that you can make a, a farming system develop for having a, a crop which have a designer group of the of phytochemicals. These, are, uh, these uh, aspects are important because every day world population is increasing not only in number, but also in life expectancy. Therefore, more and more high value phytochemical production will be required with the minimum inputs for making them sustainable to our society. And uh, before I could uh, 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 stop my presentation, once again, I would like to thank uh, Flora Fauna Foundation for uh, giving me an opportunity to present uh, my uh, work or my experiences on this very august uh, platform and uh, I will be uh, uh, indebted for ever to this Flora Foundation for giving, uh, getting an opportunity for uh, this presentation. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And I would like to answer if uh, any question is there, because that is also very much important. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for emphasizing the importance of phytochemicals and the extraction methods. And it was very interesting to see plants ranging from herbs and shrubs like endographis, asparagus, penicostema, and trees such as Garcinia, Saraca, and Terminalia. You covered a very good range of the plants. So 
So thank you so much for your talk today. And we have received two questions in the mail. Uh, and the people have requested us to keep them anonymous. That's why they have not posted on Facebook. That's totally perfect with us. And the first question is, can you shed light on the effect of storage of medicinal plants? And uh, the person has asked this question to uh, Professor Khanuja too. Uh, so he specifically asked if any of them can answer. Can you shed light on the effect of storage of medicinal plants? We get stacked material from the market and the dealers keep them for years and years. What happens to it? I mean, uh, I guess uh, he's trying to ask what happens to the phytochemical constituents, whether they degrade or not. Please, sir. Uh, I request to, you. yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, we have uh, done uh, some preliminary works, not preliminary works. We are working for a couple of work, couple of years for the uh, post-harvest uh, storage study, sir. Earlier, what uh, we did, we uh, did uh, the store of the uh, five medicinal plant under normal light condition and under the storage condition. And we were uh, uh, noticing, we were recording the content of the variation of the active components. So, sir, definitely there is a variation after some time. Uh, just uh, uh, for sir, phylanthus space, after four, uh, year, four months of the storage, there is a huge uh, decrease in the content of the lignans, sir. Like that, sir, uh, in uh, Eclipta alba, alba, sir, also, not only, sir, uh, that post-harvest uh, uh, study, sir, also pre-post-harvest, sir. If we harvest at two, after two months, sir, then the content of the bedroll electron is maximum. Just after two months, sir, gradually it starts decreasing. And it also happens during the storage, sir. Also, in case of the Sena, sir, Senocyte contents after uh, uh, nine months starts started changing, sir. We get the different products in the HPLC chromatogram. Uh, sir, likewise, we have also worked uh, for the leptidenia reticulata and gymnema geni. That, sir, there are some fixed uh, storage periods sir, for uh, uh, for uh, storage at room temperature, sir. Now we are taking that study to a variation of the phytochemicals under the controlled atmosphere conditions. Sir, that we are going to start, start, sir, because recently we have purchased the storage chamber, sir, so that we could uh, make the data that uh, how much the relative humidity and temperature is being uh, uh, is affecting the active ingredient content, sir. But, sir, you are very right that the active trade constituent definitely changes in a significant uh, amount. Not only, sir, we are also uh, have a data for the microbial loads, the, how the microbial load during the storage changes. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, if you right, want to right. It's a very, very important and crucial question in the field of herbals. Uh, uh, you know, I would uh, appreciate uh, this question in the sense that when we are moving from synthetics to naturals, it becomes as important as any pharmaceutical. And therefore, the shelf life of the herbal material in whatever form it is becomes very important. And I have been emphasizing in uh, various organizations that please carry out in-depth studies uh, in your facility with uh, stability chambers, uh, you know, what, what conditions would be able to help in increasing the shelf life? Now, let me tell you that there cannot be a thumb rule that any medicinal plant you can keep for how much time. It depends on the phytochemical constitution. And in those phytoconstituents, uh, the stability parameters which are important is one is exposure to temperature. Second is exposure to light. So there could be heat labile molecules in them. So if you expose them to uh, light, their uh, value would go down. And uh, in those cases where they are heat labile, then if temperature goes high, it might uh, go down. And uh, therefore, now it cannot be like an Arthiya market for uh, herbals. 
you know, which usually has been. We are seeing the mandis of uh, herbal materials, which are just like an adat of gehu or uh, dan. No, it cannot work. Those people also would have to uh, create conditions where they store the herbs that they are selling at a ambient condition, which is something between 20 to 26 degrees centigrade. My own experience tells when you keep the materials between 20 to 26 degrees centigrade, the, the shelf life with stability of the molecules in general uh, goes up to two years. But if you are keeping uh, it at ambient conditions, we are now, for example, today, if I keep in Delhi or Anand or any place, 40 degrees crossing, uh, you are going to uh, lose your material. So there is a need that good storage practices, including heat, light, and moisture conditions are explained well on the wrapper of the hub. We have to now go sophisticated way when it is the herbal materials. And therefore, like FSSAI, which is issuing the conditions for food materials, National Medicinal Plant Board must come out with the, these conditions. However, they, if there are specific questions of anyone that this is a hub I want to know, then I'm sure uh, DMAPR, uh, Dr. Satyanshu Kumar and his colleagues would be able to answer uh, that your herb should have been stored like this. And similarly, we have other institute uh, where I had been working earlier, CMAP, which again is uh, something which is an APEX institution which has developed many uh, such uh, studies. And uh, we uh, even studied the markers, bioactive markers, how do they behave over uh, storage? In fact, when uh, Dr. Satyanshu was doing his PhD at CMAP, he also uh, had been doing on Garcinia and other things. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it's a very important aspect, but now there is a need to go to the good storage practice standard operating procedures, and they should be imposed, they should be implemented, and the herbs should not be kept like open grains, they should be in bags with labels, telling what time it was harvested, when was it stored, and under what conditions. Thank you so much, sir, for answering uh, the question. Uh, let's move to the second question. Uh, can you explain more about enhancement of phytochemical content with converge of yield? You mentioned somewhere in the PPT. Enhancement of phytochemical content with converge of heat. Can you more uh, expand more on this, sir? So, uh, can you please unmute yourself? Yeah. Uh, this uh, generally happens that whenever uh, we try to make the content of the particular phytochemicals, suppose. Uh, uh, if we are working on the uh, ashwagandha or senoside uh, sena, suppose we, we, uh, if we wish to increase the content of the withnolite uh, in the root of the uh, ashwagandha or withaferin A in the leaf of the ashwagandha, then uh, what happens that there is a compromise between the total yield of the root as well as the content of the uh, that uh, active phytochemical. Uh, so I mean to say that uh, to, without uh, comparing the yield, that means that you should not lose a significant uh, yield percentage. That I mean, that uh, uh, our emphasis should be that we should increase the content of the selected phytochemicals or biological compounds without comparing, uh, without losing the total yield of the economic part. Okay, I hope this answers your query. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, there are no more questions if Professor Tanuja wants to, yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Satyanshu, for such a good journey across the phytochemicals and also uh, the opportunities that lie ahead. I would like to do a little bit in Hindi, हमारे साथ बहुत सारे जो दर्शक हैं या जो सुनने वाले हैं वो हिंदी ज्यादा अच्छा समझते हैं विशेष तौर पर जो कृषक हैं जो किसान हैं 
और कुछ जो समाज से जुड़े हुए लोग भी हैं वो भी हिंदी में कुछ उत्तर जानना चाहेंगे तो मैं उनकी ओर से एक दो प्रश्न आपको रखना चाहूंगा देखिए आपने जो या आपने जो अभी व्याख्यान दिया है वो तीन दिशाओं में जाता है पहली दिशा है जिसमें जो शोध करता है स्टूडेंट्स हैं रिसर्च स्कॉलर्स हैं साइंटिस्ट्स हैं उनको बहुत इससे लाभ होगा कि वो अपनी जो आगे की रिसर्च है उसमें ये सोच सकें कि क्या दिशा लेनी है और किस तरीके से वो नई नई खोजें कर सकते हैं उन केमिकल्स के लिए उन फाइटो केमिकल्स के लिए जिनकी इकोनॉमिक वैल्यू हाई है जिनका जो आर्थिकी स्तर पर अगर देखा जाए तो उनके अच्छी इनकम हो सकती है अच्छी आय हो सकती है आ, दूसरा जो दिशा आपने ली है वो है कि जो केमिकल इंडस्ट्री है जो इंडस्ट्री जो इसमें लगी हुई है वो किस तरीके से इन पौधों से इन मोलिक्यूल्स को हार्वेस्ट करके प्रोसेस करके फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्री के साथ जुड़ सकते हैं और एक वैल्यू चेन एक गुण श्रृंखला बन सकती है तीसरा जो है वो है कृषक किसान किसान जब ये मेरा एक अपना अनुभव रहा है जब इन बातों को हमारी बातों को सुनता है वैज्ञानिकों की बातों को और वो देखता है कि आज अब जैसे हमने बात करी आठ पौधे हैं भारत में और उसमें से सिक्स साठ से अस्सी परसेंट तक जो है उनका उपयोग भी किया जा रहा है तो ऐसा उसको लगने लग जाता है कि ये जो एक भंडार बताया गया है उनको आपार एक आगे जो संख्या है पौधों की जो कि बहुत लाभकारी हो सकती है तो वो उसको उगाने लग जाते हैं उगाने के बाद जब वो मार्केट में पहुंचते हैं मंडी में पहुंचते हैं तो उनको खरीदार नहीं मिलता तो अगर हमें किसानों को इससे जोड़ना है क्योंकि तो ये आपका टॉपिक हमने केवल मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स की कल्टीवेशन तक नहीं रखा था हमने इसको फाइटोकेमिकल्स पे लेके गए थे तो उस कारण मैं चाहूंगा कि आप अगर तकरीबन 10-12 पौधे ऐसे बता सकें जिनसे एक वैल्यू चेन जुड़ी हुई है और उस इंडस्ट्री के साथ अगर किसान उसको उगाना चाहता है तो डी मैप आर जो है वो उनको जोड़ सकता है आ, मुझे याद है जब मैं पिछले वर्ष आपके यहाँ आया था और हम लोग बड़ौदा रीजन में विजिट कर रहे थे किसानों के यहाँ खासतौर पे वो जो मोदी जी वाला आरोग्य मानव पार्क है उसके आसपास वाले गांव में जहाँ पे महिलाओं को भी एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप का मौका मिला है और कुछ लोग अश्वगंधा और एंड्रोग्राफिस और बाकी सेना भी लगा रहे थे तो उस तरीके के जो मॉडल्स हैं आपके डी मैप आर के वो ऐसे क्या हो सकते हैं जिससे किसान आपके यहाँ संपर्क करके या आकर देख सके और समझ सके और उसके बाद वो उद्योग से जुड़ सके ताकि उसको मंडी में ना जाने की बजाय उद्योग से सीधा एक संबंध हो जाए ताकि उसको मार्केटिंग की समस्या ना आए सर जो आपका प्रश्न है वो बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण है क्योंकि अल्टीमेटली जो किसान का ये होता है कि जो प्रोड्यूस है वो खत्म हो जाना चाहिए खपत हो जाना चाहिए अदरवाइज तो किसान का यही होगा कि वो कर ग्रो करके करेंगे क्या तो सर जहाँ तक आपने जो 10 से 12 मेडिसिनल प्लांट जिसका कि डायरेक्ट वैल्यू चेन और मार्केट चेन हो सकता है तो जो हमारे यहाँ जो मेन जो अभी खास कर करके जो सर आप तो जानते हैं कि जो मैंडेट क्रॉप है जैसे मैंडेट क्रॉप है हम लोगों के यहाँ पर छ तो जिनके लिए कि हम लोगों के पास में कंप्लीट एग्रो टेक्निक्स है जिसको कि गुड एग्रीकल्चरल प्रैक्टिसेस है उसके बाद सारी उनकी प्रोसेसिंग और स्टोरेज के भी हमारे पास में जो जिनकी स्टडीज है जैसे सर अशुगंधा है सेना है और फिर सतावर है और फिर कुछ अभी और प्लांट्स हैं तो जिनका कि हमारे पास में कंप्लीट ये है पै, पै, मतलब आप एग्रो टेक्निक्स है या पैकेज ऑफ प्रैक्टिस उनको लेकर करके यदि हम उनको एक आ, वैसे हम लोग ट्रेनिंग तो करते रहते हैं लेकिन ट्रेनिंग में सर हम लोग उनको पूरा एक बताते हैं कि इनका आपको आ, कि, किस तरह से फील्ड प्रिपरेशन से लेकर आपको हार्वेस्टिंग तक क्या क्या स्टेजेस करना है 
हार्वेस्टिंग भी किस स्टेज में करना है और हार्वेस्ट करने के बाद जो है आपका जो इकोनॉमिक पार्ट है उस इकोनॉमिक पार्ट को आपको कैसे प्राइमरी प्रोसेसिंग करना है एटलीस्ट आप बहुत कॉम्प्लिकेटेड uh, प्रोसेस में मत जाइए प्राइमरी प्रोसेसिंग का मतलब यह है कि यदि आपका रूट वाले क्रॉप है जैसे असुगंधा है सतावर है तो आपको हम पूरी बताते हैं कि आप हार्वेस्ट के बाद उसको पहले की ड्राइंग कैसे करेंगे सर क्योंकि तो ड्राइंग भी एक क्लीनिंग और वॉशिंग के बाद मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट चीज हो जाता है कि यदि आपने ड्राइंग सही ढंग से नहीं किया तो आइदर तो उसमें क्या होगा कि आपका माइक्रोबियल इन्फेस्टेशन होगा माइक्रोबियल लोड बढ़ेगा और नहीं तो फिर क्या होगा कि आपके एक्टिव इंग्रेडिएंट वेरी करने लगेगा कि यदि आपको जिसको सेट ड्राइंग करना है यदि आपने सन ड्राइंग कर दिया तो उसमें से नहीं होगा जैसे सफेद मुस्लिम होता है यदि आपने उसको ज्यादातर सोलर ड्राइंग में रख दिया तो वो सारा जर्मिनेट कर जाता है तो इसी तरह से सर हम लोग के पास में उनको बताते हैं कि प्राइमरी प्रोसेसिंग आपको क्या करना है प्राइमरी प्रोसेसिंग करने के बाद आप उसको एटलीस्ट पाउडर बना करके रख सकते हैं रखने के लिए आपको जो पैकेजिंग है तो पैकेजिंग का सर अभी हम लोगों ने ये भी एक ट्रेनिंग में सिखाना शुरू किया है कि जैसे फूड प्रोडक्ट्स होता है सर कि फूड प्रोडक्ट्स के ही तरह से कि जैसे सेना लीफ है सर और काल मेघ है तो इसमें क्या होता है कि मार्केट में जो डिमांड है कभी कभी जो सेना लिप्स का उसका ग्रीन लिप्स है तो ज्यादा डिमांड है तो उसको ग्रीन लिप का कलर को कैसे रिटेन किया जाए तो यदि आप नॉर्मल टेम्परेचर पर करते हैं तो आपको क्या प्रैक्टिस फॉलो करना है या नहीं तो यदि आपके पास में फैसिलिटी है तो आप जैसे फूड प्रोडक्ट्स को वैक्यूम ड्राइंग भी कर सकते हैं वैक्यूम ड्राइंग का मतलब है कि आप विदाउट नाइट्रोजन भी कर सकते हैं और विद नाइट्रोजन भी कर सकते हैं तो जिससे कि आपका एक टेक्सचर जो है वो रिटेन हो जाए और उससे स्टेबिलिटी भी ज्यादा हो जाए और उसके बाद यदि आप उससे जो नेक्स्ट स्टेप का जो गुजरात में चूंकि फार्मर्स बहुत इंटरप्रेनर होते हैं सर और यहाँ लेबोरेटरीज भी है तो यदि इफ पॉसिबल तो आप जो उसके मेजर कंपोनेंट है यदि आप कहीं से एनालिसिस करा करके भी ये सारी चीजें लेकर के आप जाएंगे तो आपको एक जो डिजायर्ड प्राइस है वहां पर आप चीटेड नहीं होंगे तो हम लोग का एफर्ट सर इस डायरेक्शन में है और आपके गाइडेंस में सर हम लोग बहुत सारे चीजें सीख कर करके उसको आगे तो बढ़ा रहे हैं और जैसा आप सजेस्ट करेंगे वो भी हम लोग उसमें ऐड कर करके कि जो आपने कहा ना सर कि इंक्लूसिव पैकेज होना चाहिए फ्रॉम दिस सीड मटेरियल कि सीड आपको कहाँ से लेना है क्योंकि सीड में भी यदि आपने टू टाइप सीड नहीं लिया है तो आपको आएगा नहीं रिजल्ट आएगा तो हम लोग सर सीड से लेकर करके वो एच प्रोफाइल तक का एक सोचते हैं कि पैकेज उनको बताया जाए ये बहुत बहुत महत्वपूर्ण बात है कि लोग कहाँ तक जाएं और कहाँ रुक सकते हैं और वैल्यू एडिशन के लिए वो क्या क्या और कर सकते हैं इसी से जुड़ा हुआ दूसरा प्रश्न है सत्यांशु आपने बताया कि प्राइमरी प्रोसेसिंग तो अब किसान के लिए आवश्यक ही हो गया वो कर ही लेना चाहिए उसको तभी उसको वैल्यू मिलेगी और उसके साथ अगर वो उसका विश्लेषण या एनालिसिस भी करवा लेते हैं तो उनकी वैल्यू जो है प्रोडक्ट की मच हायर हो जाएगी और उसके लिए संस्थाएं हैं जो उनका सहयोग कर सकती हैं। अब दूसरा जो इसी से जुड़ा हुआ प्रश्न है क्योंकि आज जो किसान है उसके जो बच्चे हैं वो पढ़े लिखे हो गए हैं है ना तो कोई मास्टर्स डिग्री कर चुका है कोई ग्रेजुएशन कर चुका है उनकी जो लड़कियां हैं वो भी बड़ी अच्छी पढ़ रही है तो क्या सेकेंडरी प्रोसेसिंग जिसमें एक्सट्रैक्शन तक या इस तरीके से अगर वो बच्चे लोग जाना चाहें तो पिताजी तो किसान हैं वो फार्मिंग कर रहे हैं और उन्होंने ड्राइंग करके अपने बच्चों को दे दिया कि लो अब तुम आगे क्या वैल्यू चेन का हिस्सा बनो और अब आप इसकी एक सेकेंडरी प्रोसेसिंग करो ताकि इंडस्ट्री और ज्यादा हमें कीमत दे देगी जो आपने एक ट्राइंगल दिखाया था जिसमें दो रुपए से हम सौ रुपए तक चले गए थे दो रुपए को बढ़ाते हुए सौ रुपए पे और जो उससे आगे था वो हजारों और लाखों वाली है तो हजारों और लाखों नहीं लेकिन मैं चाहूंगा कि यही किसान का बच्चा जो दो रुपए वाली चीज थी किसान उसको दस रुपए वाली बना के दे और दस रुपए वाली चीज ये बच्चा सौ रुपए की बना सके तो ऐसी कौन कौन सी सेकेंडरी प्रोसेसिंग की तकनीकियां आप समझते हैं कि जो दो चार लाख रुपए की इन्वेस्टमेंट में एक बच्चा लगा सके और मैं आपको बताना चाहूंगा हमारी जो फ्लोरा फोना साइंस फाउंडेशन है इसमें जुड़े हुए हैं हमारे साथ कुछ इंडस्ट्री भी 
और उस इंडस्ट्री में जो प्रोसेसिंग इक्विपमेंट बनाते हैं स्वराज हर्बल करके एक इंडस्ट्री है वो उसमें मदद करने को तैयार है कि किसान को अगर कोई छोटा एक्सट्रैक्शन यूनिट बनाना है या कोई डिस्टिलेशन यूनिट बनाना है या कोई फ्रैक्शनेशन कॉलम बनाना है तो वो उसमें उनकी जरूरत के हिसाब से मिली से लेकर मेगा तक बनवाने में मदद कर सकते हैं और इसी तरीके से हम औरों को भी जोड़ सकते हैं और वो क्योंकि हमारे फाउंडेशन के सदस्य हैं तो हमें उन, उनको हक से कह सकते हैं कि आप इस तरह से मदद कीजिए तो आप सेकेंडरी प्रोसेसिंग में भी बताइए कहाँ तक किसान और उसकी नेक्स्ट जनरेशन जाए तो वो लाभ का जो वैल्यू चेन का हिस्सा है वो ज्यादा प्राप्त कर सकते सर uh, जो आपने ये सेकेंडरी प्रोसेसिंग का एरिया सजेस्ट किया है ये भी बहुत ही इम्पोर्टेंट है कि इससे दो चीजें होगी एक तो इंटरप्रेनरशिप की डेवलपमेंट होता है और दूसरा क्या होता है कि जो खुद कभी एम्प्लॉयमेंट ढूंढता है वो एम्प्लॉयर बन जाता है तो इस तरह से एक चेन बनती है तो सेकेंडरी प्रोसेसिंग में जो सबसे पहला स्टेप है सर कि आपने पाउडर बना लिया पाउडर बनाने के बाद आपको एक्सट्रैक्शन करना है सर तो एक्सट्रैक्शन में आ, जो एक्सट्रैक्शन दो तरह के हैं सर एक तो जो हम लेबोरेटरी प्रोसेस के लिए करते हैं सर कि जो हमारा स्पेशलाइज्ड फाइटोकेमिकल प्रोसेसिंग होता है और दूसरा क्या है कि जो हम मेडिसिनल पर्पस से करते हैं तो वहां पर थोड़ा सा हम लोग एक इंटरप्रेनरशिप डेवलपमेंट का प्रोग्राम भी चलाते हैं सर एग्री बिजनेस इनक्यूबेटर में तो उसमें हम लोग ये उनको ट्रेन करते हैं कि यदि आपको एक्सट्रैक्शन करना है तो आप 10 के से मूव कर सकते हैं आप एक बार 100 के जी ना जा कर करके आप 10 के से शुरू करिए और जो एक्सट्रैक्ट मार्केट में जिनकी डिमांड है वो लिस्ट है सर क्योंकि बड़ौदा ये गुजरात और गुजरात के आसपास में बहुत सारे इंडस्ट्री है वो डायरेक्ट एक्सट्रैक्ट बेचती है सर तो उनको हम लोग ये लिस्ट बताते हैं कि ये मेडिसिनल प्लांट है जिनका एक्सट्रैक्ट का मार्केट में पाउडर से ज्यादा डिमांड है तो अब एक्सट्रैक्शन आप कैसे करेंगे तो एक्सट्रैक्शन में आपको ऑर्गेनिक सॉल्वेंट यूज नहीं कर रहा है क्योंकि ऑर्गेनिक सॉल्वेंट वाली कोई चीज आपका मेडिसिन में नहीं जा सकता है तो आपको वाटर बेस्ड और हाइड्रो अल्कोहलिक करना है तो वाटर बेस्ड और, और हाइड्रो अल्कोहलिक में आप एक्सट्रैक्शन हम लोग उनको ट्रेनिंग दे सकते हैं कि आप क्योंकि हम लोग तो लैब में बेंच स्केल पर करते हैं उनको हम पायलट स्केल तक का ट्रेनिंग देते हैं सर कि आपको 10 के जी करना है तो सिंपली आपके पास में जो सीड कैपिटल है दो लाख चार लाख से तो आप बड़ा एक्सट्रैक्टर ना ले कर करके आप 20 लीटर का यदि रिफ्लक्स लगाते हैं फ्लास्क लगा कर करके ही करते हैं और एक आपके पास में कंसेंट्रेटर होना चाहिए तो कंसेंट्रेटर भी सर आजकल बहुत महंगे नहीं है रोटरी वेपरेटर जो मेक इन इंडिया वाले हैं वो उनके लिए उतना स्पेशलाइज नहीं होता है तो आप इस तरह से सिंपल रिफ्लक्स कर कर करके वाटर बेस्ड या हाइड्रो अल्कोहलिक एक्सट्रैक्ट बनाए उसके बाद आप उसको कंसंट्रेट कर लीजिए कंसंट्रेट करने के बाद आपका इम्पोर्टेंट है कि उस एक्सट्रैक्ट को आप करेक्टराइज जरूर करा लीजिए क्योंकि जब मार्केट में जब आप जाएंगे तो एक्सट्रैक्ट यदि स्टैंडराइज या कैरेक्टराइज नहीं है तो कोई भी उसको लेने का तैयार नहीं होगा तो एक दूसरा एक स्टेप हो गया कि आप एक सीड कैपिटल से 10 के जी या 20 लीटर का रॉन बॉटम फ्लास्क लेकर करके हीटिंग मेंटल लेकर करके कर सकते हैं सर क्योंकि पांच के जी दस के तो सर हीटिंग मेंटल पर हो जाएगा उसके बाद यदि आपका सक्सेस uh, आते जाता है तो जो आपका बड़ा एक्सट्रैक्टर होता है जहां 100 के जी पचास के जी प्लांट मटेरियल लोड होता है फिर आप उसको जाएं और फिर एक्सट्रैक्ट हो गया आप उसको कंसेंट्रेट कर कर करके जो एक पैक है उसका स्टोरेज का है स्टोरेज भी बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है कि आपको प्लास्टिक में नहीं रखना है जिससे कि वो मेटल uh, मतलब वो प्लास्टिक के कंटेक्ट में नहीं है आपको किस तरह के कंटेनर में रखना है और कैसे कंडीशन में स्टोर करना है कुछ यदि रिक्वायर है तो आपको उसको लो टेम्परेचर वाला या रेफ्रिजरेटेड कंडीशन में रखना है या ऐसे आपको रूम टेम्परेचर पर रखना है तो फिर उसको आप लेवल कर लीजिए लेवल का मतलब है कि नहीं तो सिंपली आप एच पी हम लोग कहते हैं कि आपको हम टीएलसी भी सिखा देंगे टीएलसी का हम प्लेट दे देंगे आपको टीएलसी का आपको कुछ नहीं करना आप पॉकेट में ले जाओ आप वहां स्पॉटिंग करके देख लेना नहीं तो फिर जो है आपको हम यहाँ पर लिखा है सर बना देंगे आप खुद चेक कर सकते हो लेकिन यदि बेटर है 
क्योंकि यदि आप किसी लेबोरेटरी से आजकल बहुत सारे क्वालिटी टेस्टिंग वाले लेबोरेटरी है आप उनसे ये उसका करेक्टराइजेशन कर कर करके तो ये तो सर बिगनर्स के लिए हो गया सर अब यहाँ पर दूसरा ये ये है सर एवेन्यू ये है कि एक्सट्रैक्शन में भी बहुत डेवलपमेंट हो गया पहले जो कन्वेंशनल सॉक्सलेट या रिफ्लेक्स से होता था जो ज्यादा मनी इन्वेस्ट कर सकते हैं उनके लिए माइक्रोवेव एक्सट्रैक्शन एक्सट्रैक्टर भी है अल्ट्रासाउंड एसिस्टेड एक्सट्रैक्शन भी है और उससे जो एडवांस स्टेज में जाना चाहते हैं वो सुपर क्रिटिकल का भी सोच सकते हैं सर क्योंकि वो थोड़ा कैपिटल इन्वेंस इंटेंसिव है लेकिन माइक्रोवेव और अल्ट्रासाउंड एसिस्टेड एक्सट्रैक्शन अब ये एफर्डेबल हो गया है तो जो लोग एडवांस स्टेज में जाना चाहते हैं वो कई बार क्या होता है सर कि उससे जो हम कन्वेंशनल एक्सट्रैक्शन से जो एक्सट्रैक्ट करते हैं तो माइक्रोवेव में दो चीजें होती है सर माइक्रोवेव सर आप जानते ही मैं एक्सप्लेन कर रहा हूँ कि एक तो टाइम बच जाता है इनर्जी मतलब इनर्जी कंजम्पन कम होता है और फिर वो मेन इंपॉर्टेंट होता है यदि आप वाटर से हाइड्रो अल्कोहल से करेंगे तो इनर्जी कंजम्पन एक बड़ा इशू हो जाता है कि आपको सात घंटे लगाना है या छह घंटे लगाना है वही काम यदि आपको एक घंटे में हो जाता है तो सिक्स टाइम ये हो गया और मेनी टाइम्स जो है एक्सट्रैक्ट की क्वालिटी बहुत बेटर हो जाती है तो आप ऐसा कर करके एक नया एवेन्यूज को ये कर सकते हैं कि आप कन्वेंशनल नॉन कन्वेंशनल कर सकते हैं उसके अलावा सर अब जैसे मार्केट में कई कई बार क्या है कि जो एक्सट्रैक्ट है वो एक्सट्रैक्ट की स्टोरेज यदि सेल्फ लाइफ करना है या आप उसको एडवांस ये करना चाह रहे हैं तो आप उसको माइक्रो इनकेप्सुलेशन भी कर सकते हैं वो भी अब बहुत ज्यादा मतलब कॉस्टली अफेयर्स नहीं रहा है जो आपका इडेबल बाइंडर्स है वो उसको लेकर कर करके आप माइक्रो इनकेप्सुलेशन कर करके भी एक्सट्रैक्ट को मार्केट में ला सकते हैं तो जिससे क्या होगा कि एक तो पहले एक्सट्रैक्ट की क्वालिटी बहुत बढ़ जाती है और कंटेंट भी बढ़ जाता है और एक जो मार्केट वैल्यू सर सबसे ज्यादा बढ़ जाती है तो हमारा तो सर ये एक है कि जो मतलब नेक्स्ट जेनरेशन आप इसमें फाइटो फार्मास्यूटिकल्स में आए और उसके बाद सर तीसरा स्टेज है कि यदि आपको डायरेक्ट इसमें नहीं जाना है सर आपको मेडिसिनल पर्पस के लिए नहीं बनाना है तो आप सिंपल कॉलम क्रोमेटोग्राफी लगा करके पचास हजार रुपए का भी इन्वेस्टमेंट कर करके इनरिस्ट फ्रैक्शन बना करके उससे छोटे छोटे मॉलिकुल निकाल सकते हैं कि जो कि बहुत कॉमन है सर हम लोगों ने वाइटेक्स निगुंडो पर काम किया था सर तो वो उसका लिप से बस वो क्लोरोफॉर्म और मिथेनॉल में वो तीनों कंपाउंड जो है आ जाता है बहुत सिंपल है तो उनको ट्रेन हम लोग कर सकते हैं कि आप ये मॉलिकुल है जहां सिग्मा उसका 10 मिलीग्राम कई हजार में बेचता है बीस पच्चीस हजार में बेचता है तो आप ग्राम में बना कर करके अब धीरे धीरे क्या है कि इंडिया में भी बहुत सारे फाइटोकेमिकल रिफरेंस मार्कर वाले भी ग्रुप आ रहे हैं सर तो इस तरह से उनका एक ज्यादा रिन्यूमरेशन रिन्यूमरेटिव बिजनेस वो कर सकते हैं थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू Satyanshu, uh, what we would like is that if you can share the incubator uh, facility flyer yes. with Dr. Manika and Dr. A.K. Singh, Dr. Nirajan, same mail me. So, we will put it on our website and page pe usko dal denge so that people can then reach you because okay. incubator would be definitely helpful for them. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, plus uh, uh, one more thing. If we have a medicinal plan ki list jo aap bol rahe the, If you, uh, if you can share that too, तो वो भी डॉक्टर मनिका हम आपको अवेलेबल करा देंगे जिसका की कम्प्लीट हमारे पास में पैकेज ऑफ प्रैक्टिस है फ्रॉम दी प्लांटिंग मेटेरियल टू दॉर्डर स्टेज वो हम लिस्ट वो ए बी आई इंक्यूबेटर वाले फ्लायर के साथ ही मैं आपको अवेलेबल कर थैंक यू सर सर मैं एक चीज एड करना चाह रही थी वेन आई गो टू दार्मर्स जो मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स ग्रो करते हैं हम प्राइमरी प्रोसेसिंग की बात करते हैं आज का सबसे बड़ा प्रॉब्लम जो मैं उनके देखती हूँ एक तो लेबर इंटेंसिव वो कहते हैं दीदी हम कोई ऐसा क्रॉप लगा लेंगे जो एक दिन पे कट जाए या दो दिन लगे जैसे शतावर है उसका प्राइमरी प्रोसेसिंग करने में हमें लेबर को भी पैसे दे रहे हैं अब नाउ वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द टेस्टिंग तो किसान कितनी जगह पे पैसे देगा 
और क्या उसको वो पैसे वापस मिलेंगे सबसे ज्यादा उसका कंसर्न ये रहता है कि वो हमेशा मुझसे कहता है दीदी अब तो लेबर ही नहीं मिलते हम कैसे करवाए तो आप कोई ऐसी क्रॉप बताइए जो कम लेबर इंटेंसिव हो और हमारा काम भी हो जाए ये मैं उन किसानों की बात करूँ जो मार्जिनाइज मार्जिनलाइज फार्मर्स हैं जिनके पास बहुत जमीन बहुत पैसा नहीं है यस yes, तो उसमें देखिए डॉक्टर मनिका जैसे कि जो बिल्कुल लो इनपुट क्रॉप जैसे सर से हमने डिस्कस किया था कि लो इनपुट और जीरो इनपुट क्रॉप है तो लो इनपुट क्रॉप में पहला तो सबसे पहले यदि आप जाएंगे तो जो वही आमला है फाइलेंथस है इक्लिप्ट अलवा है इसमें कोई मतलब बहुत ज्यादा आपको इनपुट इरीगेशन या किसी तरह की केयर की जरूरत नहीं होती ये प्लांट खुद ही ग्रो हो जाते हैं और जहां तक इसकी हार्वेस्टिंग का ही है तो हार्वेस्टिंग में क्या होता है कि आपको ये प्लांट शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन क्रॉप है मतलब ऑलमोस्ट 90 डेज में ये प्लांट रेडी हो जाते हैं और इनके रूट भी बहुत नीचे नहीं जाते हैं हम लोग तो आ, मतलब खुद आ, मैं फील्ड में जाता हूँ तो मैं खुद ही उसको डिग आउट कर लेता हूँ इतना ज्यादा उसमें ये नहीं होता है और इनका डिमांड भी है मार्केट में और दूसरी कैरेक्टरिस्टिक क्या होता है कि चूंकि इसमें हार्वेस्टियस टीशू नहीं होता है इसलिए ये बहुत जल्दी ड्राइंग हो जाता है कि आप एक सेड में यदि आप उसको फैला दें ग्रीन से जो सेडनेट होता है तो ये रूम टेम्परेचर पर ही ड्राई हो जाता है तो ये जैसे फाइलेंथस है और फिर ये इक्लिप्टा अल्बा है और फिर इसी तरह से कालमेघ में भी ये कालमेघ में भी बहुत ज्यादा डिगिंग करने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ती है तो इस तरह के मतलब मैं एक लिस्ट आपको एटलीस्ट टेन क्रॉप का दे दूंगा जो कि मिनिमम इन लेबर इंटेंसिव है अब चूंकि क्या होता है कि जो सतावर का आपने बताया वो तो आफ्टर वन एंड हाफ ईयर या टू ईयर्स में ही हार्वेस्ट होता है तो उनकी रूट इतनी नीचे चले जाती है आ, लेकिन जैसे सफेद मूसली है सफेद मूसली भी ऑलमोस्ट सिक्स मंथ की क्रॉप होती है तो उसकी भी हार्वेस्टिंग में इतनी ज्यादा लेबर इंटेंसिव नहीं होता है लेकिन जो खास करके फाइलेंथस और इक्लिप्टा इस तरह के क्रॉप है या ममे जो है जिनको कि आप हैंड पिकअप कर सकते हैं और रूम टेम्परेचर पर आपको बस स्प्रेड करना है वो ड्राई हो गया और आप उसको पैकेट में कर लीजिए पैकेज में भी हम लोग ये सजेस्ट करते हैं कि आपको किस तरह के पैकेट लेने हैं कितने थिकनेस के लेने हैं कि जिससे कि उसमें कम से कम ये हो हीट जनरेशन हो क्योंकि तो हीट जनरेशन होने से बहुत सारी प्रॉब्लम्स होती है तो इस तरह के आ, मतलब जो क्रॉप है उसमें लेबर इंटेंसिव नहीं होता है और दूसरा चीज यदि आप लार्ज स्केल पर चलेंगे तो वहां पर भी क्या है कि पहले जो आपको जो ए, लेबर इंटेंसिव जो प्रोसेस है इसमें एक तो ये ड्राइंग का होता है कि ड्राइंग यदि आपने बहुत एरिया में कर लिया है तो उसमें भी अभी एडवांस टेक्निक आ गई है कि आपको बहुत लंबे टाइम तक ड्राइंग नहीं करना है कुछ जैसे माइक्रोवेव बेस्ड टेक्निक आ गई है कि जो बहुत जल्दी आपको ड्राइंग कर कर करके वो मटेरियल दे देगा लेकिन वही जो मेन इशू ये होगा कि हमें ये ध्यान रखना है कि हमारा एक्टिव इन्ग्रेडियंट लॉस ना हो उसमें किसी तरह का प्रोफाइल चेंजिंग ना हो और साथ के साथ में ये लेबर के इन्वॉल्वमेंट कम हो तो इस तरह के जो क्रॉप है मैं आपको कुछ लिस्ट दे दैट वुड बी वेरी काइंड ऑफ यू सर कि ऐसी कोई लिस्ट मिल जाए ताकि हमारे जो गरीब किसान है किसानों में भी कई किसी के पास बहुत पैसा है दे कैन इन्वेस्ट मोर तो डॉक्टर मोनिका एक मैं और चीज बताना चाहूंगा कि जैसे कुछ क्रॉप है जैसे मतलब हम लोगों ने यहाँ पर ये किया था कि जैसे जिमनी जिमनीमा जो जिसका कि मार्केट में लिफ्ट का डिमांड होता है और इसी तरह से लेफ्टी एरिया तो उसमें क्या है कि जो बिल्कुल मार्जिनल फार्मर्स है तो उनको हम लोगों ने एक प्रोसेस बनाया था कि आपको इस तरह से कल्टिवेशन करना है कि एंड टू एंड देखिये दो एंड में हमने वायर लगा दिया एक पोल लगा दिया और एक एक पोल एक एंड में बीच में क्या है तो वो क्रीपर की तरह से उसमें से जाता है और आप फ्रीक्वेंटली उसका लीव प्लग करते जाइए और ड्राई करते ड्राई ड्राइंग में भी वो जिमनिमा में भी बहुत ज्यादा ये लेबर नहीं लगता है तो उसी तरह से उसका है लेफ्टिड एरिया का भी है कि आपका जब एक बार प्लांट ग्रो हो जाएगा तो आप उसको स्टेम को कट कर कर करके आप कर सकते हैं प्रोसेस थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू सो मच फॉर आंसरिंग ऑल द क्वेरीज और अगर ये लिस्ट मिल जाएगी तो हम दोनों कोलाबोरेट करके 
बहुत इसको सर्कुलेट कर सकते हैं बेसिकली थैंक यू सो मच मे आई नाउ रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर ए के सिंह टू प्लीज प्रेजेंट द वोट ऑफ थैंक्स थैंक यू सबसे पहले तो मैं आज के जो लीड स्पीकर हैं डॉक्टर सत्यांशु कुमार जी को हृदय से धन्यवाद देता हूं कि उन्होंने फ्लोरा फोना साइंस फाउंडेशन के इस मंच पर पधार कर और आज का तेरवा व्याख्यान दिया उनका आज का जो टॉपिक है फार्मिंग अपॉर्चुनिटीज टू हार्वेस्ट फाइटोकेमिकल्स वेल्थ मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स पे आधारित है और वर्तमान परिप्रेक्ष्य में बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण है जबकि अपने देश में अपने देश में और विश्व भर में मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स को बढ़ावा दिया जा रहा है उनकी प्रोसेसिंग पर और उन पर आधारित इंटरप्रेनरशिप डेवलप करने पर हमें पूरी उम्मीद है जैसा कि हमारे फाउंडर प्रेसिडेंट ने बताया ये विषय विद्यार्थियों किसानों वैज्ञानिकों उद्यमियों सभी के लिए समान रूप से उपयोगी होगा बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद डॉक्टर सत्यांशु और हम तो ये चाहेंगे कि अगर आप एक छोटा सा लेख समय दे सकें इफ एन स्मॉल आर्टिकल कैन बी कंट्रीब्यूटेड फॉर पब्लिकेशन इन अवर सिक्स मंथली मैगजीन फ्लोरा सारथी इन सिंपल लैंग्वेज इन हिंदी और इंग्लिश जिसमें कि मोटी मोटी बातें हों और जिसपे भी चर्चा हो रही थी कि कौन से प्लांट्स हैं किसकी खेती किसान कर सकते हैं कम इनपुट से ज्यादा इनपुट से और क्या क्या सुविधाएं आपके संस्थान में उपलब्ध है जिसका लाभ हमारे विद्यार्थी हमारे वैज्ञानिक और हमारे उद्यम उठा सकते हैं अगर एक आप आर्टिकल कंट्रीब्यूट कर सकेंगे तो बहुत अच्छा लगे सर हम लोग हिंदी में ही देंगे हिंदी में कंट्रीब्यूट करेंगे जिससे कि ज्यादा लोग उसको समझ पाए हिंदी में जी, स्वागत है और उसके साथ में आपको चित्र भी भेज सकते हैं जो जो आपके यहाँ फैसिलिटीज है और जो जो टेक्नोलॉजी अवेलेबल है और जिनका वो प्रोजेक्ट ले करके और वहां आप करके ट्रेनिंग ले सकते हैं और आपकी जो इनक्यूबेटर फैसिलिटीज हैं उनका भी लाभ उठा सकते हैं मैं इस अवसर पर अपने फोरा फोना साइंस फाउंडेशन के संस्थापक अध्यक्ष डॉक्टर खनुजा को भी हार्दिक धन्यवाद देते हैं जिनके कुशल नेतृत्व और मार्गदर्शन में ये वेब सीरीज का आयोजन सफलतापूर्वक किया जा रहा है और साथ ही हमारे सहयोगी जो नोडल है डॉक्टर मनिका और डॉक्टर नीरज जो जनरल सेक्रेटरी हैं फाउंडेशन की उन्हें भी मैं हृदय से धन्यवाद देता हूं समय समय पर उनका पूरा सहयोग मिलता रहता है और इसी के साथ अगले महीने यानी जून में सेकेंड सैटरडे को 11 बजे एक नए एक्सपर्ट के साथ एक नए विषय के साथ हम आपके समक्ष फिर उपस्थित होंगे तब तक के लिए धन्यवाद नमस्कार